Hey, what's up everybody? It is Luke Beller. Sorry, it's been like seven days since I put on my last video. I've been busy with some other things for the past like week or so, but I decided I need to come out with a Packers Falcon sort of recap video. Talk about some things we saw last night, like some Robert Tanyan, three touchdowns, let's go. Some Jar Alexander shutting down Calvin Ridley, even though Calvin Ridley isn't my fantasy team. I'm not sad at all. I still got the W. Um, and of course, Darius Smith coming in with three sacks. So I wanted to break down some things from this Packers team that looks unstoppable. And I would just ask if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps push this video out to more people, get some more Packers fans coming in, get the channel growing. So if you enjoy it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. So to get right into it, yesterday, okay, of course we're coming up against this Falcons team that honestly is pretty bad. They've been bad this entire season. They have let wins um, slip away from them against the Cowboys, against wh whoever other team that was. And honestly, there's some good things to like. There's some things I like about this Falcons team. I mean, their offense, they have Matt Ryan. He's a pretty good quarterback. Not great. I wouldn't say he's amazing. He's getting a little bit older. His arm strength seems to be fading a little bit. And I think we saw some of that last night with the, uh, you know, against the Packers. Of course, with like Julio Jones, still probably arguably one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. And now, of course, they got Calvin Ridley. And Calvin Ridley is a guy who I love coming into fantasy football. I drafted him on my fantasy team. And coming into this week, he was the number one wide receiver, like out of any receiver in the NFL, number one wide receiver when it came to fantasy points. And he got a straight zero this week. And I did have him on my fantasy team. But um, I still pulled out the win with by just three, three, just three little points. I pulled out the win, um, even though he got me zero. So J. Alexander shut him down. Um, I'm pretty sure he was on him most of the night last night. And I think Calvin really had like five targets, but didn't have any receptions. So honestly, just the first off, the fact that this guy who had been dominating, tearing up, you know, every defense he'd face this time, just gets completely shut down by J. Alexander. And if that doesn't show you just how good J. Alexander really is, um, I think he's really making a name for himself. I'd say he's definitely is one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL, especially after looking at last night's performance. And um, overall, this Packers offense just continues to dominate without Devontae Adams and, and Alan Lazard. The two guys, the two wide receivers who obviously, you know, probably the two best wide receivers on the Packers, Devontae, of course, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. And it's sort of funny to think that, you know, most people thought the Packers needed more wide receivers to even compete. And we come in sitting our two best wide receivers and still dominate. Of course, this Falcons team isn't good, really. So, um, you know, there's that. But still, considering that, the Packers just continue to find ways to dominate. And it seems like any time there's a player that goes down, the Packers find a way, um, you know, start fix, move things around, basically, and just continue to dominate. So let's talk about Robert Tanya yesterday. Robert Tanya, man, three touchdowns. Um, you know, as I put in this video, I mean, is he the next Drew Michael Finley? Because, I mean, honestly, the Packers haven't really had a insanely good tight end since I think Jermichael Finley and that was a while ago that was like I mean that seems like forever ago seems like 10 years ago five years ago I don't know it seemed like a long time ago but a, a tight end having a three touchdown game against this Falcons team it begs a question we could have a good tight end finally and I did talk about Robert Tanyan in the video I put out sort of talking about players I thought could break out this year because there were some people saying like they thought Tanyan couldn't push his way past Sternberger because lots of people thought Sternberger was the guy but through training camp Tanyan sort of you know showed himself and now it seems that Tanyan is probably the best tight end on this Packers team, especially after last night's um, performance. And so now Tanya, if we take a look at his stats last night, six receptions, 98 yards, and three touchdowns. And um, so that will make five touchdowns from this entire season. And he's caught 13 of 14 targets from Aaron Rodgers this season. So obviously this is a guy that Aaron Rodgers can trust. He knows he can trust him. He's thrown the ball to him 14 times. He's caught 13 of those. So obviously, as you can see, the chemistry is building between these two guys. And it makes sense that, you know, with Devontae Adams out, with Lazard out, there were going to be other guys who sort of stepped up. And this guy especially was Tanya last night. So I'm excited to see, you know, if he can continue to bring it um, for the rest of the season. Hopefully get Devontae back after the next bye. Hopefully Lazard will come up the IR in the next few weeks. And, um, you know, honestly, this team is just so stacked. Imagine having Devontae back, Alan Lazard back, and then we got Tanya now who can really pick apart defenses. So this Packers offense just seems to get harder and harder to stop um, for any opposing defense. So honestly, I mean, this Packers offense is uh, just hard to stop. So now let's take a look also. Interestingly, last night, it seemed the Packers were playing Jamal Williams a lot more than usual because I have Aaron Jones on my fantasy team. I made a trade for him recently. You know, because we gotta we gotta give support for our guy Aaron Jones. But it seemed that Jamal Williams played a lot more than he usually does. And I know Matt LaFleur was talking about how he wants to utilize Jamal Williams and he's really just a great back. And so last night Jamal Williams actually had the most receptions on this Packers team. He had eight receptions for 95 yards. So obviously the Packers, you know, really utilized passing to the tight ends and the running backs last night. They didn't run the ball, you know, that I think they took had like 25 carries total, but it was mainly the passing game. Aaron Rodgers 27 for 33, 327 yards, four touchdowns zero interceptions. And um, I think I saw something on Twitter that it looks like Aaron Rodgers right now is on pace for 55 touchdowns and zero interceptions, which is, 
I'm pretty sure that's right. But I mean, that, that would be a crazy season. I mean, I don't know if he'll, he can make it through the whole season without throwing an interception. It's possible. But anyways, Packers offense dominated. So now let's shift to the other side of the ball. So we're taking a look at this Packers defense against Matt Ryan. So Matt Ryan finished with 28 for 39, 285 yards. He threw zero touchdown passes and um, zero interceptions. And sort of the guy who got the two touchdowns for him was Todd Gurley, or for the Falcons was Todd Gurley. He had two rushing touchdowns. But we held the Falcons overall to only 78 rushing yards. And so the fact that, you know, the biggest thing I think about this Packers defense that people sort of question is, can they stop the run? And last night it seemed that they, could, they stopped it. I mean, mainly besides, of course, the two rushing touchdowns, um, they really did hold this Falcons team and um, honestly did very well. Zadarius Smith finishing with three sacks. So, of course, that is something good to see. Of course, Zadarius Smith being one of the best defensive ends um, or, you know, rushers, whatever you want to call them, in the NFL. So, obviously, last night the Packers really did an insanely good job. And the one guy who honestly did well on this uh, Falcons team was like, his last name was like Zacchaeus or something. I'd never heard of him. And um, every single time I threw the ball, I was like, who is it? Is it Julio? Is it is it Ridley? It's like, no, it's, it's Zacchaeus. Who is Zacchaeus? Do you guys know who Zacchaeus is? I honestly have no clue, but he had like eight receptions. But honestly, we were able to hold Julio Jones to 32 reception yards, Cal or receiving yards, and uh, Calvin Ridley to a straight zero. So this Packers team, these corners shut down corners. Jerry Alexander shut down corner. Honestly, this Packers offense matched with this Packers defense, even though this Packers defense isn't probably, you know, top five, maybe we're top 10 defense. Um, there are still some issues that the Packers need to work on. Um, sometimes this happens to be tackling like against Kamara last week, but overall this Packers defense, I think does enough and does very well. Um, you know, getting sacks, getting turnovers occasionally, um, sort of holding teams when the Packers really do need to hold them. Cause I don't know if you guys remember last night, the Falcons started on like their one yard line. They pushed the ball like all the way. We're about to score and the Packers held them in the red zone on that drive. And that really set up on um, the Packers coming off and pulling ahead with the lead. Cause it was seven to zero. And then I think they came in when they got stopped, the kick a field goal, it was seven, three. Um, so that really helped the Packers, you know, keep up with that lead, be able to control momentum, control the ball. And so this Packers defense does come in and make stops when it is important, when it is necessary. So that's basically what I wanted to break down. Overall, this Packers team, we're stacked. We're stacked beyond imagination. We got Devonta Adams down, Alan Lazard down, and we still come out and dominate. Um, so honestly, Packers, 16-0, I think it's possible. Um, you know, let me know down below if you guys think it's possible. I think it's possible. Honestly, looking at the schedule uh, before the season, Looking at the first four games, honestly, it sort of looks like people were like, well, if we finish 2-2, two and two, looks like that would be a solid start because the beginning of the season looks tough. But as we can see, it was not tough for the Green Bay Packers team. So um, it's exciting to watch. we got a bye week next week, but then we come back after that week. We're going to continue to dominate 5-0 and oh is coming next. And I think, I don't know, I feel like we could go 16-0. and oh. What do you guys think? I think it's very possible. Super Bowl, here we come. Um, but that's basically what I wanted to break down in today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, if you want to see some more Packers content, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go Pack Go. See you guys on the next one.